Well, let's get more now on those local elections next week. Joining us now is Sky's election analyst, the associate member of Nuffield College, Oxford, Professor Michael Thrasher. Thank you Good very morning. much for being with us. And you've been doing every election with Sky since we started, that's since right? Since 1989. There you go. So if you were the person to talk to to get the analysis of what is likely to happen. Um, what should we be looking out for next week? Well, there are a lot of seats um, at stake in these elections, and um, most of the seats were fought in 2015, as the, uh, the Conservatives won both the general election and the local elections there. So they're defending the most seats, so they have most uh, to lose. But, so it will be interesting to focus on Conservative losses, but equally it will be interesting to see which party, which of the rival parties, uh, Labour or the Liberal Democrats, for example, uh, gain the most seats. So there's a lot of uh, interest Mm. in what happened. We can have a look now actually at the current state of the parties because what you're saying is quite important isn't it um, and if we have a look at this I mean the Conservatives have got more than double the number of seats that they're defending. It's the scale of these elections so almost eight and a half thousand seats in England and of course there are local elections in Northern Ireland too so there's a lot uh, of places with um, uh, ele elections and therefore lots of seats and therefore a great deal of scope for parties to do badly or parties to do uh, well. And so the Conservatives are really defending a high position, not only in terms of um, councillors, but also in terms of the councils that they control. So there's a lot at stake for them. So it's about how many seats they lose, really? Yes, because the, uh, the baseline is 2015, and since then you'd expect that uh, where we are in the, in the Parliament, uh, that the Conservatives would, would uh, lose ground from there. The question is, really how much ground uh, they've lost, given the context of where we are. OK, well, we've got a couple of projections, haven't we, which um, show some of the different uh, scenarios. We can have a look now at... Um, this is something that you prepared, isn't it, uh, for the Sunday Times? Yes. So what we, what we do is we... Each week there are local council by-elections and you can use those council by-elections to see which way the electoral wind is, is blowing, if you like. And um, Based on the projection uh, from, from those results, the Conservatives and Labour are more or less neck and neck, but the Liberal Democrats are doing quite well in local council. So we could see a Lib Dem fight back. You could see a fight, fight back from the Liberal Democrats. The long promise. Exactly. <laughs> and so therefore, the Conservative losses uh, are there, are around about 400. Uh, but uh, disproportionately, it's the Liberal Democrats that are picking up seats from Labour. But that's the evidence from local council by-elections. And to be, to be honest, though, that evidence is beginning to dry up as these elections, these May elections, uh, got closer and closer. Because it's interesting, isn't it? Because if you look at the polls, things could actually be a lot worse for the Conservatives. We can just have a look here. This is the projection if you look at the polling data. Yes, and it's a, it is unusual for pollsters to ask a question uh, specifically about how will you vote in local elections, but opinion uh, did that. So it's a valuable piece of information that we have. But if you can look at it, compare the Conservatives are much lower on the opinion poll than they were in the council by-election projection. Uh, Labour is, is more or less the same, but the Liberal Democrats are also uh, much lower. And therefore, in terms of uh, swing since 2015, the projection from that is over a thousand seat losses for the Conservatives. Which seems like an enormous number. It is. Well, it's about one in five of, of, of those that they're, they're defending. And uh, th I would say that this is up at the upper end. If, if they really do exceed um, that number, as they did in 1995, when the, uh, Tony Blair's New Labour simply wiped them out in this uh, part of the electoral cycle, then that really will be disaster for them. And how much do you think we can read into the local elections results when it comes to what could happen in a general election? Because, of course, lots of people are saying that we might have a general election sooner than we think. It's more difficult than, than normal, for the simple reason that is that these local elections are, are being fought. Um, for example, we don't have the Brexit party standing, any candidates at all. Uh, UKIP is standing uh, candidates, but many, many fewer than they stood in 2017. So therefore you've got all the people, uh, in 15 rather, um, so you've got all the people that voted for UKIP in, in 2015 not having a candidate. Uh, to vote for in many places. Um, so that complicates matters. Also, Change UK uh, isn't fielding any uh, local election candidates. So it's more difficult uh, than normal to uh, project from, from the local elections what's going to happen in a general election. And therefore, we really need to concentrate upon how many seats each party is losing, where the parties uh, that are uh, advancing are, are advancing. For example, where is Labour 
doing well. Labour needs to do well in southern England, and I see that Jeremy Corbyn is visiting Stoke-on-Trent, a, a place where Labour uh, traditionally had power there. And if that really is the limit of their expectations, that's, that's really setting the bar very, very low indeed. So all our attention will be upon where they've lost seats and where perhaps they've picked up councils. What are the key places that you're going to be looking at that could give us you know, the best picture of where the country is currently at? Well, uh, we, we look at places like, for example, Swindon, where the Conservatives have a very narrow uh, majority and they only need to lose one seat to lose no overall control. And in places like that, and of course we've had the context of Brexit there, we've had the uh, problems with the Honda car factory, and so it will be interesting in those kinds of areas to, to see how local issues, uh, as your previous guest was, was, was talking about that, how local issues will play out against the broader context of how people voted uh, in the EU referendum. So we'll be looking closely at the pattern of voting in leave. Uh, most of these local authorities that have got uh, elections um, uh, voted leave in the, in the EU referendum. So it will be interesting to see what happens in those areas. And of course, if you are a leave voter, uh, annoyed that we haven't left the EU already, who are you going to vote for if you well, want to get the two main parties a kicking? Yes, and that's why it's such an interesting set of, uh, of elections, because um, in, in a sense, if you're angry about not leaving, um, why would you vote for the Liberal Democrats who definitely want to stay? Um, so, it, uh, unless people say, I don't care about what the Liberal Dem Democrats say about uh, the EU, I, I'm going to use my vote in a, in a protest for, and I'm going to vote for the Liberal Democrats. In local elections, you've also got in, a lot of independents standing mm. as well. Mm. Um, so, it might be that those independents uh, might benefit. But it's going to be fascinating in how uh, that UKIP vote breaks out in terms of does it go to the uh, Labour, does it go to the Conservatives? Does it even go to the Liberal Democrats? Fascinating stuff. Well, we're going to be doing the local election programme uh, together overnight, uh, midnight yes. till 6am. So I'm sure we'll be having a lot more of these conversations then. Look forward to it. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Thrasher.